morning, guys. Afternoon, evening. Good night. Sweet dreams. Bye. Just kidding. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about the functions of the male reproductive system. And remember, while girls are very complicated emotionally, boys are very complicated structurally. So um, pay attention. Not that you weren't going to. I know you're going to. You're fantastic. Okay. So skipping today. <laughs> Remember how there was like 800 things that ladies do, including but not limited to literally make another human. So boys make hormones, mainly testosterone, and they make a sperm. That's the derpiest sperm I've ever seen in my life. Um, so their part that they contribute, I'll say, to reproduction is just the sperm. Ladies take it from there. So we're going to talk about those two first. So this is the symbol for a male, if you've ever seen that. Um, so they make testosterone, like I said, and we already talked about testosterone in the endocrine system, that it stimulates male reproductive organs and male secondary sex characteristics, um, sex drive. Um, sex characteristics would be like the deepened voice, the facial hair, the um, uh, muscle mass increase, things like that. Oh, look, it's all right here. Mm -hmm. And then reproduction. So reproduction is the sperm. Um, or, or the male part of reproduction is a sperm. Reproduction itself is the creation of a new individual. If, I mean, you knew that. Also, oh my gosh, look at that 80s pantsuit, but adorable. Moving on. Um, males, again, only contribute to sperm. So now we're going to talk about each individual structure and what it does. So the testes is the main male reproductive organ, just like the ovary was in the female. And remember that testes um, started out as ovaries and then dropped down. So testes are going to do very similar things, just the male version. So while the girls produce estrogen and progesterone, the men, uh, the testes is going to produce testosterone. And then inside of the seminiferous tubules, which are these teeny little convoluted, squirrely, squeamy, twisty, tubies inside of the testy itself, um, they make sperm. That's also where the testosterone is being made in, in um, right outside of the seminiferous tubules. So the epididymis, which is the um, thing that I always say looks like bang bang shrimp that attaches to the back of the testy, uh, that is going to store sperm while they mature. So basically we took one of these little tubes here and we cut it and now we're looking into it. Sperm like starts being made here and then gets pushed to the center and once it's at the center it goes through the little twisty tubes and then it hangs out here so this is the epididymis and here is where it lives while it is maturing because um, it is not grown up enough to quite leave the house yet so i always think um you know this is like your mom and dad's house this is where you live until you're old enough to go out on your own Sperm um, reviews the male sex gamete, 23 chromosomes, haploid, whatever you want to say. Um, so the function of the sperm is to fertilize the ovum, the lady egg. If you remember, ladies make, release, and nurture one egg, just the one egg. They put, it is a very high stakes bet. They put all their love and energy into one egg. This is the exact opposite of how the male reproductive system does it. Men make 20 to 200 or more million sperm per milliliter of ejaculate fluid. And the average ejaculate um, ejaculation has like, I think it's like three, four, five milliliters or so. So we're talking like half a billion sperm every ejaculation that's and we wonder why boys and girls fight we are literally the opposite don't you can't you can't get they are wired different you can't get my, okay all right moving on so um have you ever heard a man or someone talk about that someone is sterile or infertile so this happens for a lot of different reasons in women and we'll talk about it later but in men um, men who have who are say that they are sterile or infertile um, sometimes people mistakenly think that means they do not make any sperm. That is not true. If they have less than 20 million sperm in a milliliter of ejaculate, we call them sterile. So it does not mean that they are incapable. It just means that they are very, very, very unlikely of being able to fertilize an egg. And again, it's the exact opposite of how women roll. We got that one egg. They got that half a billion sperm. 
uh, vas deferens. So we talked about the testes where it's made, the epididymis is where it's stored. And then if you remember, the vas deferens was that um, 45 centimeter tube that connected the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. So it starts like here, vas deferens, vas deferens, vas deferens, vas deferens, vas deferens, vas deferens, vas deferens. And then once it passes the seminal vesicle, that little gland right there, the road just changes names. It's still the same tube, but we stop calling it uh, vas deferens and we start calling it ejaculatory duct. So it's just a highway. So I think this is the factory. It makes a sperm. The epididymis is the, you know, the mom's house where it grows up or the, the storage room where you put your stuff for a minute until you need it. And then the vas deferens is the highway. Very, very, very long interstate type of highway. Now, ejaculatory duct is just this little part of the tube right here. Um, the reason that we call it a different name is because the vas deferens is only carrying sperm. That's it. But this tube, once it passes this gland right here, the seminal vesicle gland, it's kind of hard to see in this picture. It's no longer just sperm. Now it's carrying sperm and the fluid that the seminal vesicle um, ejects and adds to the sperm. So it's just got a different uh, content traveling in it. So we call it a different name. And that name is the ejaculatory duct. It will, um, the ejaculatory duct dumps into the urethra, which remember was the tube that drains the bladder in both a man and a woman. Um, but only in men does it share double duty between urinary system and reproductive system. And the urethra. So reproductive system, it will carry semen outside of the body. And in the urinary system, it carries uh, urine outside of the body. Again, both men and women have a urethra, but in women, it is 100% urinary. In men, it, it is shared between the two systems. Okay, so now the little different parts, the little glands and stuff that can get really confusing. So the seminal vesicle. So again, this is testy. This is epididymis. This big tube is vas deferens. And then it stops being called vas deferens right here and starts being called ejaculatory duct, drains into the urethra, drains out. And the reason it changed names is because it passed this little gland. Remember, a gland is something that makes um, a secretion. So um, they produce a secretion and there's going to be three different glands in, the man, in a man's reproductive system that makes secretions. They're different because of what they secrete. So this one secretes um, a fluid that nourishes and protects sperm. It might be weird, but I always think of it as this is like, <laughs> I think of the sperm being made here and growing up here, and then they're off on their journey. And when they pass a seminal vesicle, I always think the seminal vesicle gives them a bag lunch and wraps them in bubble wrap. So I literally imagine little sperm do, 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 getting wrapped in bubble wrap and being handed a bag lunch before they continue on their path. Um, most of the fluid that is added to sperm, most of the fluid that really makes up semen um, is added by this seminal vesicle and it doesn't get mixed together. It doesn't get added until the moment of ejaculation. So the sperm are chilling here and um, when a man ejaculates, they leave the epididymis and they start uh, traveling and that is when the seminal vesicle adds its fluid to them. It doesn't happen until the moment of ejaculation. Next comes the prostate gland. Um, this is kind of a famous gland that only men have uh, because it tends to mess up a lot later on in age. So it's this circle right here. And you can see that the ejaculatory duct goes through the middle of it and the urethra. So the urethra going through the middle of it because this is cut in half. There would be another you know, side on. This is going through the center of the prostate. So there would be you know, more of it over. I can't. You know what I'm saying. This is a 2D version of a 3D gland. So this is going through the center of it. And when this messes up, a lot of times it clamps down and shuts off that urethra and then men have problem um, urinating older, uh, later on in life. So this also makes a fluid, just like the seminal vesicle. But while the seminal vesicle protected and nourished, gave a bag lunch and wrapped in bubble wrap, the prostate gland helps with expulsion, which means like if I expel you, I kick you out. So expulsion is to kick out. And then motility, which is like mobility, how, how well they can swim. So seminal vesicle, bag lunch, and bubble wrap. Prostate gland, I always think then we put, <laughs> we put the sperm in a cannon and put little flippers on their feet so we can shoot them out and the little um, flippers help them to swim quicker. That's how I remember the prostate gland, the cannon and flippers. Um, this also, just a side note, and this isn't on a test or anything, but um, when a man ejaculates and the, the sperm is traveling, this prostate gland kind of like squeezes shut and clamps off the bladder. 
And that is important because it then it makes sure that only semen, which is sperm plus all these little fluids, are leaving and the man isn't peeing at the same time. Number one, that would be disgusting. Um, and number two, pee is a little bit acidic. And so if a man was able to urinate at the same time that he was ejaculating, the urine would kill the sperm and we would all die off. So it's very important that this little road gets shut so that the bladder cannot empty while the man is ejaculating. Now in hypertrophy to get bigger, hyper, uh, lots of and trophy development, when uh, later on in life, and we'll talk about it, the prostate in, in most men will start to get a little bit bigger and um, it can shut off the urethra and cause problems urinating. Bulbo urethral glands. So these are the tiny little pea-sized glands that are right below the um, prostate. Um, also called cowpers, don't worry about that. Pea-sized and inferior meaning below the prostate. So this is the last one that we're gonna talk about makes a little fluid. So we talked about the seminal vesicle, protect and nourish, bubble wrap and bag lunch. Prostate gland right here, this red kind of ball uh, was expulsion of motility, shot them out of a cannon with flippers on. And then the bulbo urethral glands are make a fluid that is alkaline, meaning the opposite of acidic. It is basic, like pumpkin spice latte basic. I'm just kidding. But I always think um, that this is like Tums, or like this is, this is Pepto-Bismol. This is the thing that balances acid, that counteracts acid. And we need that for a couple of reasons. First of all, in case the man has any little pee drops left in the urethra, which is disgusting, but can happen, um, making the sperm uh, float around in a very basic alkaline fluid helps offset that acidity. And also the vagina is a little bit acidic. And so it would kill all the sperm if the sperm didn't have a buffer here, something to make them a little bit more basic so that they could offset that um, <laughs> Uh, it's we I frequently have read in many textbooks that the vagina is what they call an inhospitable environment. It is trying to kill the sperm. So it helps to kind of offset that a little bit. And yep, that's all guys. Uh, I'll link this if you're interested in watching. It's pretty, pretty good. One of those little videos that help explain things more. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I miss you guys so sincerely. Um, goodbye. I love you.